Welcome to Tombstone Tuesdays. This is a show about historic cemeteries and the people who love exploring them. Now, of course, you might have noticed that it's actually Wednesday, uh, and the reason is <laughs> it doesn't really fit with the name, right? Well, we were, a lot of you know, we were just about to have the show yesterday when my internet croaked and even my cell phone was not functioning and I was just having a difficult time. So thankfully, there were a lot of people, of course, were here. I saw later that were in the chat saying, where'd she go? That's not like me to just flake out. If anything, I, I was, I'm always like early for things. So um, I was a little frustrated yesterday and I'm just really grateful that our guest today, um, now I have her down as Angelica. And I'll, but everyone calls her Angel. Apparently, I'm just the random person who still calls her Angelica. So I'll, I'll call her Angel during the show. Um, but she was so gracious. She said she could reschedule for today. Thank goodness. So, hey, it's Wednesday, but we're going to have a Tombstone Tuesdays anyway. And let's see, I see Scott's here. I need to say thank you to Scott, too. For, <laughs> that was very nice of you for checking in on me and see if everything was okay. Because so. Um, well, it was just the internet was out, but it was frustrating. And also, Debbie, I don't see her here yet. I'm, maybe a few people can't make it who um, who helped. But Teal and, and Debbie, they made sure to let Angel know that uh, what was going on, because I felt really bad. She showed up, you know, thinking we're going to do this show, and then I'm just not there. But these things happen. I mean, you know, I mean, we let's talk about the weather a little, right? Uh, our weather here in Texas last week made <laughs> made headlines all over the world, and uh, I was lucky. I mean, yeah, we lost power, and we had a flood in our kitchen, but you know what? It didn't happen in the middle of the night, the flood. It was in the afternoon, so we caught it early, and yeah, it was chilly in here, but the fish in our fish tank didn't freeze. I saw some poor people who actually had their fish freeze and we I'm in love with all our fish and our little crabs and everything in our tank so we were okay you know we could put a few more layers on it was fine but I still have some friends here in Texas who don't have running water um, oh hey I see Sandra's here hi Sandra thanks for coming I know you were here yesterday too thanks guys for showing up again yesterday was a little bit odd so anyway yeah the weather was crazy down here and um, that was a little nuts but here is the time uh, in our show, as you know, I always bring in air our sponsor. And this week's sponsor, I chose exclusive French room hats, uh, just because they're so darn cute. And oh, I see we have Debbie did make it. I needed to say thank you to you so much yesterday, Debbie. You were really kind to help let people know what was going on because I was having a hard time letting anybody know that I didn't have internet all of a sudden and I didn't want it to seem like I just flaked out on everyone. <laughs> so, so thank you. I'm glad you could make it. Yeah, so anyway, I saw these. I was doing some research in the 1920s, I guess, as you can tell by the cute hat. And, you know, I love a cute hat. I'm a sucker for a cute hat. I was not researching hats, but yes, I did spend quite a while perusing the wonderful fashions of the 1920s and thinking, wow, 10 bucks for that cool hat. So there you go. Now, of course, the real supporters of this show are my wonderful Patreon supporters. And I have to give a shout out to Anne and Bob, Connie, NVJ, Julie, Margaret, Hugh, Mikhail, Naomi, Angelica, <laughs> Scott, who is here, I guess, <laughs> uh, Ghost Cat, Ian, Jessica, Kenneth, Tim, Peter, Sarah, Rachel, and of course, the other Tui, who is no relation to me. And I just think that is so nifty neato. Oh, we have a few more people here. I should give a little shout out to too. We have Sam Self, happy to be here. Looking forward to hearing about Boston. Me too. I, you know, I have not been there. That's a big reason I've got Angel on here today. And also my playlist is here. Hi there, looking forward to your discussion today. Thank you. And you know, you guys, um, if you have questions along the way, I'm really trying to get better about uh, bringing those into the mix. So I'm learning as I go. So anyway, once again, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons. And I, speaking of wonderful Patreons and their wonderful support, I have to mention Kenneth Reed again. Now, you might have, if you watched the show last month, you might have caught one where I was talking about his afternoon tea league. He has this group called the Afternoon Tea League. And they do, this was a, a picture he sent me of their October themed tea 
it's just so stinking cute i love it and let me just explain they have made me i am so thrilled because i was saying wow too bad he lives up in colorado i live down in texas i would so love to be a member of the Afri uh, african <laughs> afternoon tea league if i could well what do you know i get an email the next day kenneth heard my my plea and just yesterday in the mail i got something really nice from him here let me show you a picture of kenneth in case you um to refresh your memories here is kenneth and his group the afternoon tea league one of their members is uh has uh, since passed away you can see her annie there she's um <laughs> in, uh, they're visiting her grave and having tea with her so uh, just so much fun but let me show you what came in the mail yesterday this is just so much fun so i um uh, I got this really neat letter from Kenneth. Oops. And he mentions that uh, the Afternoon Tea League is a group of tea lo lovers who get together when, when they can, and have afternoon tea. Our meeting is when two or more members are present. They don't have any dues or any officers, which I think is great. And uh, he sent me a few things. He sent me my membership pin. Now this is the, my everyday membership pin, the one you can wear on everyday clothes, but I'll show you the, the fancy membership pin that you wear on your dress clothes. Uh, our current club newsletter and some pins that he's made. So check this out. So he, he, um, they have a club newsletter comes out like four times a year and I was checking it out. It's looking really neat. And look who made the cover. <laughs> That's me on there. I made the cover of their newsletter right there with Queen Victoria and an article um, talking about having picnics in cemeteries. It's just so much fun. And on the back, there's some pictures of them having tea and of some tea facts. It's just a fun little newsletter. I'm just thrilled to pieces uh, with this. And then I got to show you the, the pins that he sent. So I'm wearing my, my everyday afternoon tea pin, but um, he has, he sent me one that says no picking in this picnicking in the cemetery. And then it says, uh, Bring back some picnics, afternoon tea leak. And uh, I actually have a picture of this same sign, and I'm going to do a video about I was at a cemetery here a couple months ago on a nice day, and not very far from this sign, there were people picnicking in the cemetery. And I was like, good for them, because that is an ancient tradition, people. That's just, you know, just wrong. As long as you clean up after yourself, you aren't rude. This one is, um, I'm rather fond of ghosts and spirits. It's the living that tick me off. Yeah, I can, <laughs> I, I must say they are more scary, the living than the dead. He made this really cool admission to their uh, local historic, a ticket to their local historic cemetery, along with a uh, rest in peace, Annie Jones, who is their, um, their member from the Beyond the Veil. Uh, and then of course my favorite, because I'm such a sucker for a good pun. <laughs> this one says, afternoon tea league, I'm a morning person. Ha <laughs> ha, I am so going to use this slogan. That is the best. Love it. Love it. Um, now here, let me show you if I can real quick, <laughs> this little official pin that I can wear. Now when I have tea and I, I, the weather's starting to get nice here. I was telling you how crazy the weather was last year. I mean, not last year, last week in Texas. I mean, as if you probably haven't heard. So it's like 70 today. It's very, it must be very confusing for all the plants and birds. Um, it's just like, I don't know if you can see it. It's like a little teapot here. I'll do like they do on those makeup channels. <laughs> can you see? I don't know. It's like a little, it's a little tea kettle. And then it's got this little pin that goes down to the little teacup. It's super duper cute. I'll take a picture of it and post it online later. But I just, all right, that totally made my, my whole week and everything and just thought that was great. So thanks again. And he is, a, I should tell you that my post, my Patreon supporters at a certain level, I do send out physical postcards to them from historic cemeteries that I visit. And uh, so I'm about to get some of those out. I'm, I'm behind the whole losing, you know, the whole weather thing got me out of my little, my little uh, rituals. Uh, now we have our cemetery photo of the week. This comes from a past guest, David M. Hobbin, and he was a really great guest. I'm sure you remember him. He'd been to so many cemeteries. He travels for work and uh, he sent me this one, which I thought was quite interesting mortality symbol. Um, if I can get it up here where you can really see it. So this is how it looks. This is from a cemetery in Georgia and very pretty it looks like marble but here's the symbol i'm talking about it is a a pocket watch that is closed so it is like a uh 
a mortality symbol, but it, it's an unusual one. I have not seen a closed pocket watch before, and so I thought that was really neat. I'm always on the look for symbols that I have not seen before, so that's pretty nifty. Oh, and yeah, let's see. Debbie mentions that the, yes, yeah, she must be talking about that cute little pin. I know, wasn't that cute? Everything, that everything in there was so cute. Um, and your postcards are beautiful. Thank you, I love sending them. I, I need to send you one here. And here we go. Angel has taken me to many of the historic cemeteries around the common. Oh, cool. So she's already given you some cemeteries. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm very excited. We'll be getting one from her here soon. Now, I do have a different sort of book of the week. Every week I usually do a, a cemetery themed book of the week. And I have a little bit of a different one this week because uh, while we were going through that cold snap last week, luckily I had gotten my suet feeder and my bird feeders out. I was very worried about the wildlife. They have it a lot rougher than we do. And uh, I had a great time. I've got some new visitors now. I've got this guy coming by fairly frequently now. If I can get this going, you can see him. He's a, um, a flicker. <laughs> He's coming and eating from my little bird feeder. So it's kind of neat. But the book I chose for this week, and it's the first time, hey, I'm glad that worked. I wasn't sure if the video would work or not. Um, it's called Birds, a Spiritual Field Guide. And uh, it's really interesting. So it, it it doesn't have the goal of this isn't to have every single bird out there it's mostly north american birds and when you look up a bird uh like uh you know i could look up uh, i tried to see if that bird that we just had that i was showing you that's a flicker but they have woodpecker in here as close as i could get but they tell you um just like a regular field guide some information about birds but then they get into myths folklore and cultural associations so it's not just like here's what they eat i mean they do that they tell you where they live what they eat what their taxonomic name is etc but then they give you some interesting facts and like with the woodpecker i didn't know there was a scottish legend that the woodpecker was once an old woman who refused to share her food with jesus and she now has to search for her food under the bark of trees so just it's a really fun book if you have um maybe someone who loves birds in your life it and also loves symbolism and folklore they might enjoy this book so i just thought that was a good one for this week of course you know i write books too so if you're in the mood for a book about oh the stories under the stones um i have one six feet under texas all about texas uh, the stories behind different historic cemeteries or you want to learn more about cemetery symbols you know check that out google put my name in on amazon and see if anything tickles your fancy all right, so now I would like to bring on our guest here and just tell you a little bit about her before we jump into everything. Um, my guest is, well, I, I've been calling her Angelica Cronk, and as we were chatting before I brought her in, she said nobody calls her that. So Angel Cronk, which is Angel, really is the perfect name for her. I was going to say that uh, she is truly an angel. Um, first of all she's been a long time subscriber to my weekly newsletter and she is a brand new patron of mine over at patreon so she'll be getting postcards soon as well um but i like i said she truly is an angel she uh some of you know my dad had covid last year and he was very ill to the fact and it was due to a you know bad circumstances it was to the point where no one saw my dad's face none of us even saw him for two months and i was in a tizzy and so i asked my newsletter readers to send him postcards because he was in the hospital with covid with no cell phone and he's very hard of hearing so even when i would get through to him i could hardly so for two months i mean very little uh, contact with him. She sent him cookies. She sent him cards. A lot of people uh, you know, sent him things to cheer him up. And she, so she's definitely one of my angels. He was really thrilled. He's like, someone from Boston sent me cookies. He was so excited. Uh, so he's saying when he, he's still not feeling better, but he, he plans to write a thank you letter to everybody. So everybody will be getting them. But he's, he's not quite, it really took a lot out of him. He's better, but not completely. So anyway, she's wonderful. And I, she lives in Boston. And I, I, has this happened to any of you before? Like there's a place you have been planning to visit and every time you're gonna go there, something happens and you don't get to. That is Boston for me. That's a couple places, but one of them is Boston. I have tried so many times. I mean, 
five, six, seven times to go to Boston? I thought last year, I finally had it. We were going there. Well, obviously, <clears throat> a lot of things, plans went to asunder last year. But me in Boston, I don't know what it is. We never seem to be able to, we're like star-crossed lovers. I have admired Boston from afar. People always tell me, oh, Boston, it's, you would love it too. I'm like, yeah, I know. It's so like Europe. There's so much history there. And I'm like, I know, I know. So we, she, here we have Angel. She is surrounded by history everywhere she looks. She shared a bunch of photos with me. And I'm just going to kind of let her, I'm playing show and tell this week. I'm just going to show her pictures, pretend she's showing me around Boston. And we're just going to talk about it. So um, without any further ado, let me um, bring her into our stream here and see if I'm doing this correct. Please. Hey there, Angel. Did I get Hi, you? Hi, I'm Angel. Um, yeah. I live in Boston. I live in Southie. Um, so Southie's famous for Goodwill Hunting. Um, oh the, yeah. Where that was filmed is about four blocks from my house. That wow. way. Um, the bar it was actually filmed in is in my neighborhood. I live so outside these windows. A whole. 30 seconds from my house is the ocean. Um, I live on the harbor. Um, we've had whales, we've had dolphins all in the harbor you can see from my house. Um, I live in a three, four walk up is what they call us. I can't hear you, uh, Twee, you I think you have me on mute. I can see you've got a mute sign. You have me on mute. Mute. Oh, I'm on uh, mute. Oh, there. Yeah, oh, you had I was just phone. asking. Oops, I don't know how I got stayed yeah. muted. Oh, um, so can you can everybody who's here hear us both now? Now that I unmuted myself, I don't know how I did that. <laughs> if anybody can't hear us or there's any audio issues, let us know. Now, Angel wore earbuds, so probably everything's just peachy keen. <laughs> But I'm just double checking. Oh, yeah, I got you guys. in the great Apple, you know, earbuds. Woo so um, I know. Yeah. I, know. I love. It. Okay, good, good. All right. Well, good. I think if if they couldn't hear us, people would be telling us right away. I'm not hearing or seeing anything to the. Oh yes, yeah, someone says yes, so I guess they can hear us. Okay, yes, yes. Okay, good. We got a yes from Debbie and a yes from Sam. So, all right, guys, ready to roll. We have. Oh, thanks, Wade. Hey, Wade, thanks for coming. Okay, guys, I just so, wanted to um, double check. I was. Okay, anyway, we're doing I fine. I walk. I mean, I live a standard Bostonian life. I walk to church. I walk to the grocery store. Um, oh, my man. parish is Saint Bridget's. Um, it's four minutes that way where I volunteer. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, everything is within you know just a couple of seconds away. I don't like. I don't. I never leave my house. I'm not, I'm not hearing a real strong cliche accent is there a reason no well i'm not from boston i'm, oh, I'm okay. originally from nevada i was i i'm a transplant i've been here for just at it'll be it was just three years mm -hmm. um so what what's strange though about boston is that i can go months and never hear an accent accent is not common oh. um the accent has been bred out of bostonians because people felt it was um low yeah. yeah it's been bred out of them um, i always think that i love accents but people I do love get it. Um, connotations about them don't they yeah so you don't hear it often and when you do mm -hmm. hear it it's it i love it um mm -hmm. so you actually hear it more often in rhode island uh oh. rhode island has a really really they they definitely have um and even then you have to, I've got a friend, I'll, I get, I'll get, get him really worked up just to get it out of him. Oh. <laughs> um, but I have to get him really worked up mm -hmm. um, just to get him going so I can hear it. But it's pretty rare and it's few and far between. There's a few, um, there's a few people in my parish that I can, like, you'll still hear it because they, they've been in the neighborhood for really, you know, their whole lives and you'll yeah. hear it. But no, I'm from Nevada. So I, you know, if anything, I may have um california lingo tendencies that are transplanted from california oh right so no i, I just I, i'm kind of a, to love... a, of a accent mutt i think i pick up a little bit from wherever i lived like i lived in virginia till i was 10 so i say lawyer you know i can't say lawyer it sounds silly so you know whenever i learned a word you can or use it's just funny i hear different things of course being here in texas i i love all the accents as well but oh i'm but sure when you're around texans you probably pick up their 
their accent. Sometimes I hear it and they don't. <laughs> I, I hear myself, things come out of me like, oh, I'm fixing to do that. I'm like, where did that come from? But they don't hear it. So they don't think I'm, you know, it's, I'm like, what? Whatever. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, the It's funny around here. You just, you don't even hear it. It's It's amazing. I just don't hear it very mm-hmm. often and I love it when I do it's so like to me it's so pretty I love it yes I'm like god I wish they would I wish they didn't breed it out of them or they're I wish I wish they would not have I wish those people were still here a lot of them are in yeah. Florida, Florida though to be honest a lot of people go to lower Massachusetts which is just Florida so because oh, yeah, it's cold yeah. here they don't want to be here yeah now you so mentioned what do you that you walk to church wonderful- oh I was yeah. I was gonna ask, so you, you walk to your church. Is there a, like a churchyard mm-hmm. right there, like a nice graveyard um, right by your so church? So the answer or? is yes and no. Um, I go to St. Bridget's. St. Bridget's is 100 years old, but we don't mm-hmm. have a churchyard. Our churchyard is belongs to St. Augustine. St. Augustine oh, okay. Chapel, uh, 1818, is the first Catholic cemetery in Boston, dedicated Catholic cemetery. Um, it's about a mile and a half. Um, Now, a mile and a half in Texas is not a mile and a half in Boston. A mile and a half in Boston is like four trains and three helicopters. That's Um, like Europe again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, it's a very different travel style here. Mm -hmm. Uh, We walk everywhere we can because it's just, it's a real pain to try to drive anywhere. I love walking. It's just painful. Um, but here, I'm going to bring up one of the pictures. Yeah, you it's, sent it's me. definitely. Can you walk? Can, yeah, you, can so you walk Saint here? Augustine Chapel oh. is. <laughs> oh, go ahead. You can. I can't walk there from my house. Mm-hmm. Um, so by foot, if I were to walk there, it would take me uh, probably two hours. Oh, oh okay. Um, but by like, it's, you know, by car, it's you wouldn't want to go there because parking would cost you $50 and that's not yeah. an exaggeration. Oh my. Um, mm-hmm. But what you would do to get there is you just take the train and the train's like a dollar 50. It's nothing. Anyway. So that's the granary. Um, mm-hmm. That's the granary. And that's a very famous. Uh, I've heard of cemetery. it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So inside the granary, you've got some very interesting things and that's actually not a wonderful picture of it. Um, I apologize. That's a better picture of it. So that's one of my favorite pictures Mm -hmm. of it. I love that dogwood tree. Mm -hmm. Um, So just next to that dogwood tree, which again is not in that photo, is the is where the uh, Benjamin Franklin's parents are buried. Oh, Um, Paul Revere is in that. So they have have him a little later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they have two tombstones for Paul Revere. Very interesting. They have a tombstone, a beautiful one, and then they have the tomb of of Paul Revere. Oh, and they also. And they also have all of the victims of the Boston Massacre. Now, remember, the Boston Massacre was five people. I was going to bring that up, too. Oh, yeah, okay. it was five them? people, um, right? Mm-hmm. And it's actually not there. Um, so the Boston Massacre happened in the middle of the street, but they didn't want mm-hmm. people standing in the middle of the street and taking photos. So they moved the the marker to some place that people could safely take photos. Now, mm-hmm. to be fair, if you were there, like someday you'll come and actually get to see it and we'll go. Mm-hmm. Um, and likely there'll be a guy who probably should not be smoking weed, standing in the middle of it, <laughs> taking photos. Um, but it's there and he's like, you know, it, you'll see it, but it actually happened in the middle. And also the Boston massacre, people don't know was actually caused by a bunch of snowballs. Um, oh, I didn't and I'm know sure, that. yeah, so um, big joke, and people talk about it here in Boston all the time. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, it was just a bunch of snowballs that got thrown. Um, and then it kind of escalated that big, that just, meme that's like, oh, it escalated quickly. Or something? Yeah, yeah, so it escalated yeah. quickly. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm sure somebody on YouTube is going to be like, no, she got it all wrong. That girl from Nevada is all wrong. But, you know, <laughs> and I'm. You know, be controversial, Angel. You know, so We're on your side. You live there. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I'm sure. So one of the one of the locals was like, "Okay, so here's what happened. They're all standing around. They're all arguing. Somebody threw a snowball, and then it escalated." And ah. I was like, "Oh, that's a very Bostonian thing to happen, um, hmm. because it does happen that way. That's how you know. That's how things escalate. You get so, hit in the head with a, a snowball. It's an ice ball. You know that can hurt. That can be get you mad. I, I can imagine that. 
Now, you mentioned the Boston Massacre. I thought I'd bring up you also. So Sam Adams is like He's there as well. He's actually in the granary, right? Oh, okay. It is pronounced granary. I've always seen it online and been going granary. I didn't know. So granary, good to know. It's the granary. Mm -hmm. Um, It's the granary burial. Um, At least I pronounce it that way, and I'm sure someone's going to correct me. Um, (laughs) So things here are pronounced differently. Mm -hmm. Um, And that just happens to be a lingo thing. Uh, You'll see things will be spelled a certain way, and you'll see it, and they're like, it's not pronounced that way. So again, um, so also Mother Goose is in the granary. So Mother Goose, like the Mother Goose, the American Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. woman who created our American tales, she's in there. I took, so um, actually listening there, who said, Mm -hmm. Angel's taking me there, Sin, Cynthia's my mother. Um, oh, all right. She took me, I took her there and there's, you know, it's her. They have all these little feathers. People come, they take their kids uh-huh. and the mothers have them put the goose feathers inside of Mother Goose. You'll actually see it's Mother Goose's Aww. tomb. That yeah. is really sweet. That is yeah, really sweet. Really, I, love, I will really definitely neat. have to see that. Well, I wanted John to back Hancock up a little. Oh, good. oh, John Hancock. Oh, I love yeah. him. Okay. I have a, here's my John Hancock story. Um, I was like 10 years old and I answered the door and it was UPS. It was the first time I'd ever accepted a package. You know, he goes, can you accept this package? I'm like, I guess so. And he goes, well, just put your John Hancock here. And he hands me a sure. thing. And I, you know, we were studying him. Actually, I think I might've been 11, whatever. Um, well, he has a very neat way. I was trying to make my J's. Like at that point, I kind of tried to uh, Hancock's signature. I mean, if anyone's ever really looked at it, that's pretty. Right. Oh. It looked like did it looked like I might be losing everything froze for a second. Anyway, so I wrote John Hancock down and, and he I handed it to the <laughs> to the UPS driver and he laughed and it was like I'm like, what did I do something wrong? He's like, ah no, nah, and he hands me the package anyway. But That's um, cute though. <laughs> but I wanted to back up a little because we were at that first I guess the granary. Yeah. And I wanted to say to point out to people, this is one of the reasons I dined to go to Boston are these wonderful, very European style headstones they are a bit taller than you usually see elsewhere and they have that old-fashioned style to them with the yeah so the i'm sure pool. your viewers know this um the reason is because they're puritan and the puritans wanted to be sure everybody knew they weren't catholic um it was really important for the puritans to make a mark and say we are not the catholic church we don't want any of that catholic mess those people over there are they're Catholics and we're Puritans here. Mm. Um, and so they try to get rid of any kind of Catholic sy- symbolism. Um, and they try to purify, hence Puritan, their church by creating very simplistic style symbolic, like symbolism on their tombstones. Um, but yeah, they would create them. Grim. Re- yeah. And they would make them really big. Um, yeah, they did. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Ooh. It was, don't see that over here uh, elsewhere money in, in, right in so we have yeah. the money to make this huge tombstone mm-hmm. but we're also very puritan we you know we're very <laughs> so we're very we're chic spartan, we, don't, we want to make but we're sure we're also kind of showing off at the same time like yeah, look how spartan yeah. i can afford to be what yeah i know so much fashion in right. headstone and cemetery symbols go along it's so funny to me i just it's like I, the same reason you see lots of tabletop tombstones inside uh, of the the burial um, these burial grounds. And there are also reasons they don't call them here. They do not call them cemeteries. They're burial grounds because cemeteries mm. means that they are Catholic and we don't want to be Catholic. Oh, I see. Well, I, I wanted to point out this really nice memento mori that you had that was nice, the skull and crossbones. And yeah, just, we don't get that. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. when you, the farther west you go in the United States, you're not going to see those. Uh, much at all and i just wanted to just touch on briefly for people that there's a real progression from skull and crossbones and then you know the puritan era then death's heads in the puritan era which would be sometimes a skeleton with wings and then you know we as we move toward the 19 the 1800s 1700s you get those soul effigies and then by the time you get to victorian era suddenly you got the cherubs but there's just this sort of progression that you see and uh, and we just don't get the death's heads or the skull Skull and crossbones um, in my neck of the woods. You see them all the time here. They're all over here. 
yeah, you guys, are, I, I can hardly wait. I really want to come and see some. <laughs> yeah, we got time. We got all the, we got all the, all the, the death stuff, all the memento mori. Yeah. All yep, there it is. Mori. Okay. So interesting. Yeah. So that's the mm-hmm. big, that's the big, that's the big stone. That's the big, like, this is the grave of Paul Revere. Oh, oh, the little tiny rock next to it, that's actually where he's buried. Oh, here, let me just <laughs> back up. And I'm noticing a comment that's funny here. Uh, Wade saying he reminds me of how Mormons don't allow gambling yet invested in Las Vegas. Right. And oh, also allowed, they're not allowed to drink caffeine, but they're allowed to drink soda. But they, yeah, because they have, what is it? They're invested in Pepsi or Coca-Cola. something. Coca-Cola. I should know. I had a lot of Mormon friends growing up and they were, I think some of them, at some point they were allowed to drink Pepsi, but not Coke. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that is funny. Oh, hey, hi. Oops. <laughs> yeah, so that, well, you know, we've, there's always a little hypocrisy to go around. Yep. But yeah, yep. so this, this shows, so Paul Revere has this sort of grand truncated yes. obelisky thing. Was there something yes. on top of it at one point? Or I, that, was it always it's, this? It's a plant. Someone brought a plant and oh. the plant is dead. Like it's oh, just a plant. Okay. People bring them things, obviously. They bring them grape goods. So plants, oh. bouquets, things like that. Mm-hmm. You'll always see pennies, rocks, grape oh. goods. Um, wow. yeah, and that's still happening. Mother Goose gets feathers and pennies and rocks. I love that. She gets the Paul feathers. Revere. That is so sweet. Mother yeah, Goose. Paul Revere, Paul Revere gets pennies and quarters. Mm-hmm. Ben Franklin gets, um, pennies. Pennies would make it's, sense for Paul Revere because he made that copper bottom pans the Revere wear. Yeah. <laughs> so copper pennies. Here, if you, can you can see his stuff all over. Like there's oh, the I mean, Paul Revere wear in our MFA. You can mm-hmm. see his bell. His house is still here. We can go to the Paul Revere house and actually see his house, like where he lived yeah. with his family. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like four dollars to get in. It's nothing. Really? Yeah. It's, Do they have the little? Um, I know he had a pet squirrel, and he made him a little silver collar for his little pet squirrel. I don't <laughs> think so. I've never seen oh. a squirrel, but you can see his spoons. Oh, all right. Oh, and cool. they're very pretty. Oh, so, um, yeah, there's the big tomb there, and then there's the little bitty tiny tomb. That teeny tiny tomb is actually where he's buried. Oh, okay. Well, you know. Now, do you run across um, any graves where maybe they have two different birth dates or death dates on them because of the calendar changing? Or do you see that? Um, no, more so here the difference is, um, and there's not any good photos here. So, um, if we were walking, so everybody who's listening to this, I want you to, in your minds, I want you to visualize we're walking on the sidewalk. I can fix and that. we're walking on the sidewalk and we're walking north and you look over and on the left, the granary is set up shoulder height. Oh. So you're looking at the granary and the first tombstone is at your shoulder. Oh. And the reason at that high is because they have put in 5,000 bodies in there. Oh. And it there are 5,000 bodies and only 2,800 graves, gravestones. Yep. Which is So they've been burying people yeah. there for so long. They've got so, so many stacks that they've lost so many people and so many stones. And most of the buildings in downtown Boston, I'm told, a lot of those buildings have actually robbed tombstones to use as their foundational blocks. I've been so surprised about that, about how, you know, there was just this element of practicality where, yeah, they would use a tombstone for a while. But uh, I've come across this in different places where um, it was, I think, up until maybe the 60s when they distinctly outlawed the practice of stealing headstones. People would just go and take things and use them in their gardens. I need some stones for my garden paths. It's weird. On the one hand, we always think of um, our ancestors as having much more reverence for death and you know wanting to be buried and then not being in an unmarked grave. And then on the other hand, people at the same time, those same, yeah. you know, once again, we're talking about those diverse kind of hypocritic, hypocritical activities where they're like, hey, but then again, I do need some garden stones. And I do come across this much more often than I, I really expected. So that that's interesting. By the way, um, Bob and Connie McIntyre are saying this is very interesting. So I just wanted to share that with you. Yeah, that is something. So, that... I mean, but keep in mind, shoulder height, I'm five foot two. Yeah. So, oh, wow. you know, to a normal human being, it's like hip height. I'm just a short person. But yeah. um, it, everything here um, in North End, one of the burying grounds, like it, it, the bodies are stacked so tall that, you know, my dad is six foot two and it was over his head how wow. tall the hill was, cops burying and... hill. 
and of course that's why we eventually um and started in uh, boston well in in um, mount auburn um yeah cemetery. i and actually that, i picked the first, there i was not hmm? supposed to oh you know and that was the whole thing you're supposed to be able to that was America's that was the whole point of mount garden. auburn yeah that it was, was the whole supposed point. to be a park it was America's first garden cemetery. They were yeah. inspired by Père Lachaise mm -hmm. and they were having that same problem in France. We were stacking the bodies and then, you know, a big flood and they spill into the streets. And so you, the people in, in Massachusetts were like, yeah, we're stacking these bodies. So let's move them out of it town. Actually it actually happened apart. here. Mm -hmm. um, oh, did so it? Cops bury, burial ground, um, if you're looking at it from the north, part of it's been huge. I believe it was a flood. They had a huge flood of some kind Ugh. rainstorm mm -hmm. came in and took out one the the right corner of it and took all of the bodies mm. and basically washed them through the city Oof. um yeah and who knows how long i mean at that time people have been burying there for 300 years yeah so you mm -hmm. know di various stages of decomposition um, oh, yeah. is not pleasant uh, mm -mm. for lack of a better term here i got you. um various mm -hmm. stages of decomposition within burying vessels um yeah. and now you have to put it all back together and you can actually when we go you'll see it like you can see that the bricks that they use to put them together there's different color bricks like oh, wow. this is the bricks from the old mm -hmm. here are the new bricks where we put the people back in and then yeah put it yeah back together all right so. well i i put this one next to paul revere because um kind of a connection here you were saying this grave probably holds one of the the this this yeah. person buried here probably yeah tell us about him held one of the landers in old north church so you know we all know that yeah yeah so um keep in mind that actually is a real thing it happened here um from my house you know as the crow flies i guess about three four miles away ish um, and, you know, uh, that burying ground, the one I'm actually talking about where the, the, the corpses did the thing, um, is near that church. It's a walking from that church, maybe half a block. Oh, wow. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, we'll actually stand at that, like that burying ground and look down and the church is right there. Um, and he they probably held one now we don't have you know obviously there's not a lot of details they didn't keep records like we do now right there's mm -hmm. no there was no twitter no facebook no one didn't say oh i just did the lantern thing to yeah tweet. yeah you know, it yeah wasn't exactly. like that then. <laughs> um so we don't really know um but but it's neat to think about you are just in right. the center of so much history i think living in boston seems like it would just mentally keep you steeped in so much American history. I You're always really in great. it. Um, mm -hmm. It's funny to me here, people who grow up here don't know, they're not, they don't want to know. Like you tell really? them, they're like, how come you know? Or they're, they're not interested. They're like, oh, it's, you know, that it's, can it's, happen, always, yeah. it's mm -hmm. because they're always here. They grew up with it. You know, they, they're like, oh, I saw it when I was in grade school and they don't ever mm -hmm. see it again. You know, they go see it when they're like 12 or like 10. Um, but for me, you know, I'm basically a tourist and I will openly admit that I am a tourist. For sure. There's um, nothing wrong with tourists kind of gets a bad name, but to me, tourist means someone who's still, uh, engaged I'm in, in I'm wonder. It. Yeah. You've yeah. got wonderment for the world around you. You're not just walking down the street just with blinders on. Like I got to get from a point A to point B. You're still like, Hey, what's all about? Hey, what's over here? And I mean that keeps you from being bored, I'm sure. And it makes you have an appreciation for the world that's right in front of you, which I think is really I what do. travel is I mean, all about. I, there's, it, there's nothing, it's not boring. Like I can no. see this stuff over and over again, like cool, you know, I, mm -hmm. I'll see Mother Goose's grave every day. Fine, cool, it's still cool, you know? It's I have always to say going something to be cool. about, you know, you're talking about how I, I, most places I've lived, locals aren't that engaged in their history. But Texas is very different, and I don't know if it's because I quite often meet people here, and they will tell you right off the bat they are a native Texan, and they will tell you I go back four or five generations, and they're very proud of this. And I, I've also learned that um, in their schools they actually learn Texas history all the way along. So I don't know if that helps if it's presented in some way that's interesting. I just have to say that for I'm just putting that out there that, and I've lived a lot of places. I've lived Italy, Belgium. I've lived several states, mm -hmm. and I'm just surprised um, how rare it is. To who are really connected to the area, you know, the way you are. And I think that's really great. But for some reason, it seems to be more common in Texas.
I don't know why. I think so. it depends. Like the people here who are related to the original pilgrims, mm -hmm. those people you know all about. Ah. Mm -hmm. Like they'll tell you about their pilgrim, like who their pilgrim was, what they did, who their you you will know. And if those like if they had a family member that fought in the revolution, oh, you're gonna know all about it. Ah, like, okay. Everything. So there's that um, connection. But if not, yeah. yeah, if not, nothing. It's Cricket. just like ah, old stuff. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Well, I want to dig around a little more. I was curious about these pictures that you sent. I really know nothing about them. Is yeah, this so to, what are these all about? Yeah, so um, they don't do this anymore. I, I, I accidentally got on in this one, and I'm so glad I did. Okay, so mm -hmm. inside of the Old North Church, they used to do very common in Europe. Um, they buried people inside of churches. They buried them in the basement. I they wondered. buried them inside it of churches. Like of this. this is inside um, here, the old ceiling. North Church. This wow. is the inside of one if by land, two if by sea. This is that church. I had no idea um, there are people You can't there. do this anymore. They oh, don't bummer. do this tour anymore. Um, ah. I just happened to go and I don't know like... Oh, you lucky duck. I God was looking out for me that day. I'm very blessed. I saw it. Um, That's so neat. yeah, so here they are. Just, so, wow. so now you've seen it. Yes, I was there. I got to see it. They did open a couple of tombs because they were doing some excavations. Mm -hmm. um, they're still doing excavations here when they when they're doing renovations on things. They have to do excavations because this is an open arche um, archaeological site here because oh, it's an old right. city. So they still have to do digs. Um, so, so yeah. Is it on the side there? Is this one of the crypts that's under yeah, the church? Yeah, it's a crypt. It's a family oh, crypt inside wow. the Old North Church in the bottom, in the basement. Like, you go through mm -hmm. the Old North Church, you walk like down here. into the, like, you go down into the, you basically walk around the side, mm -hmm. it's down in the bottom, and it, you have to walk down these stairs, and it's underneath the church. Did it smell really musty? I've been under oh, yeah, some yeah. churches in, in Europe, and, like, the air just feels so old. I, you didn't even know air could feel old, and you're like, is this okay to it, breathe? It's just different. <sighs> It's it's been there a while. Yeah, yeah. There's something it, intense. It doesn't get a lot of ventilation. Yeah, not a lot of ventilation going on. But yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Well, that is really sp yeah. that is really cool that you got to go there. Now, I so they look like they were still burying people as of 1808. I mean, that's fairly recent. Right. Fairly recent. Um, it's not a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously they're not doing it now, but um, that's not that long ago. No, it isn't. Um, Mm -mm. In the grand scheme of things. And do you know what no. is the story with that little coffin there? Do we know? I don't know. I'm sure. So it was a. Uh, oh, and is those, that the like, lantern? That's why they got the lantern there? Is that because of the. Yeah, of, so it's what they excavated. They had of, pulled that stuff out. I'm sure it was part of the excavations. Um, oh. But I just thought it was a very neat photo, and I was like, oh, that's yeah. cool. I'll just take a photo. So I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. have a lot of information. I'm sorry, no. guys. Oh, I, no worries. I just wondered. I Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> but it's the hey, this is just Mistress show and tell, people. you know? Yeah, Angela, I, just I got wanna, nothing. I just, sorry. <laughs> now, what, you live near a very old fort, you were saying? Yep, that's in my neighborhood. That's, um, that's actually, so this is on Halloween. Um, we have a fort in my neighborhood. Um, Kind of it cool is neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. So uh, right now, like if we were to get out and walk, it's mm -hmm. we do walk there. It's built in 1620. Um, I believe it's oh, the yeah. oldest. It's the oldest fort in the United States. I want to say oh. that's correct. Um, we took it from the British. <laughs> oh, because <laughs> we took everything from the British. We took it from them. Thank you. It's ours. <laughs> um, but every year at Halloween, we turn it into a haunted house. So the, the the local neighborhood does that. Um, and you're mean. not looking at real. Those are not real tombstones. Those are tombstones yeah, they that they put up for the kids. They put them up for the kids. Um, but inside there, like the fort is very cool. It's very, it's still old, obviously, but they actually decorate it for the kids. Um oh. The but the cannons are original, like they have the old cannons up there from 1800s. Yeah, yeah, they're from the 1800s. They tell me the kids love it, like it's really neat because you can go and watch all the kids dress up in their costumes, running oh, yeah. around, going nuts. And it's really like 16, you know, 1624. Um, yeah. I don't know, it's like 1600s. Kids love it. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, you can walk over there and actually see where like the 
like the bombs got hit. Like you can actually see where they've been hit with um, cannonballs. Oh, I've seen so, that like down in St. Augustine too. Oh yeah. It's, it, there's no doubt in your mind. Like you can definitely like, you know what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, actually there's a a B and B in Vicksburg that um, you can stay at that, that has a, one still wedged in the wall, <laughs> like a cannonball, just still wedged in the wall. Um, of for any of your listeners who are looking, we call it Castle Island. It is not a castle. It is not an island. We call it oh, Castle okay. Island. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I just saw that somewhere on your, you know, like I said, I'm just letting you do show and tell for yep, me. Not a castle, not here? an island. Oh, you, you sent a bunch of pictures from Newton yeah, Cemetery. Yeah, so this is actually really my, neat. I'm just... my favorite cemetery here. Um, mm-hmm. So this is my favorite cemetery of all of the ones that I've seen. This is this is like my holy. I want to go. It looks great. Um, this this is Holy Hood. I am in love with this cemetery. <laughs> um, so this is on the outside of Boston. This is in Brookline. Brookline is where JFK was born. So Ooh. John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Um, his presidential library is. Um, it's too dark to go outside now, but it is as the crow flies right now from my house is about a 10th of a mile. Wow. Um, it's across the Harbor. You can see it from my front porch. Um, oh. you know, we could get in a paddle, like we could canoe over there, but we just drive a car. <laughs> um, so he's right in my neighborhood, his presidential library. He's actually born in Brookline, Massachusetts. It's a suburb outside of Boston mass, but his family rose and his, her, obviously his dad and his family are buried over there. And his sister, as you know, she's very famous for having had a lobotomy. Yeah, um, I think I got a picture of the. Yes, uh, yes, she's plot. she's there. There they are. So this is the Kennedy burying ground. Interesting yeah. enough, is that um, the Kennedys had a stillborn while so Jackie was pregnant, had a stillborn while she was actually in. Um, I have a cat on my lap. Oh, um, I know mine's been walking around. I said. <laughs> um, so Jackie had a stillborn while oh. they were in um, while they were in DC, really? and they had the stillborn buried here in oh. um, here in Massachusetts at Holyhood. And when Jack was killed, they had the baby taken from Holyhood and buried with Jack. Really? I did not know that. Oh, yeah. wow. Um, wow. So this is the Kennedy burying site. They're all there. Mm-hmm. Um, not, I mean, obviously he isn't there. She's yeah, not yeah. there. But um, so uh, they're like all there. Of- so what's interesting here, though, is like, so you actually have a true epitaph there. So of a priest mm-hmm. sleeping. Um, but these oh, are some really yeah, beautiful Yeah, these photos. are some like, other ones. Yeah, it was a true one. Yeah, go ahead. You can pull them okay. off. There, so those are... That's just a local parish priest. It's from like the 1850. Yeah, so uh, cool. The, the it's parish so puts together the mm-hmm. money. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, this is my favorite. This this particular, this particular, um, it's not technically a Catholic cemetery mm-hmm. because they do have other burying sites. But if you were to walk through it, it'd be like, oh, these people are definitely Catholic because let me tell you, I'm Catholic, Catholic and this is, this symbols. is, this is our calling card. I know these people. Ah. <laughs> um, like this is, this is like, I tell my husband, I'm like, bury me here. They also have yeah. a very cool. So underneath the next oh, oh, picture, oh, oh, oh. underneath that guy. Oh, oh this one? Um, yeah. This one it's a very for? interesting story. So mm-hmm. very rarely do you see these. I've never seen one of these except for in this one. Although there's a few of them walking around. I think there was one in your book where there was a statue that was set inside of a plexiglass case. No reason, but that is the infant of Prague. So for Catholics, Ooh. it's a big deal. Yeah, I didn't um, know what it was. It, yeah, it but it is a Prague. really interesting, I've never seen one anywhere but this one cemetery. And I've been in, obviously you can tell I go to tons I've of them. I've been seeing them more recently. It's weird, but n- not in person. People have been sending me pictures of them lately. I know there's that famous one in, in Chicago, gr- Little Gracie or something. There's one yeah. of them. But people have been sending me, like I've probably seen six or seven in the last couple of months. I'm like, I've but never seen not- them in person like, either you see one i've never seen one when i've been out and about and like you i mean i'm always going to cemeteries when i get a chance yeah, what, oddly right. enough i've not seen one i mean it makes sense to protect right. them like this right. although i do want to clean the glass on there sometime you know <laughs> and i think it makes it more eerie but i don't it know does. if that's good or bad anyway I'm not sure. continue sorry i didn't well, mean to make gonna... you jump apologize oh, no. huh oh you've been making me jump pol- 
Okay. No, no. Uh, um, nothing to apologize for. I was, I tend to get exuberant during conversations. I was just going to say, yeah, it is to me, it's, I don't know. I understand wanting to protect uh, your, your statuary. But on the other hand, to me, um, a cemetery is an open air museum. And That's so all it is. the patina mm -hmm. on a, you know, a little lichen growing, a little discoloration from rain or whatever, the elements, to me, that uh, is just uh, adding Mother Nature into the mix. And I, so in a way, I kind of, I mean, I understand why people would want that. I mean, there are areas where acid rain might be really bad, but my favorite cemeteries are the ones where they don't have them covered. Come to think of it, I just remembered where I saw one under glass that was in Barcelona, but they had tons of them that were not under glass, and I really liked them. One of my favorites shows a, um, an angel escorting a soul to heaven, and he's got wings and he's flying her up to heaven. And to see that outside rather than like in a museum is very awe-inspiring. And I, I just think if that were covered by glass, it would really take away. So I don't know, jury's out for me. What do you guys think if anyone has opinions on covering them? I guess I can see both sides, you know, so. I mean, I, there, just, that, I don't my know. Little rant. Really that cool. was my rant. <laughs> okay, what about this one? I like this. Just a cool, pretty. so um, as you nice know, Celtic Boston's press. very Irish. We're a super Irish city. We're the most Irish in the country, I think. Ah. Um, mm -hmm. Chicago may have more only because by, by percentage of population now. Yeah. Um, so we have tons of Celtic crosses, tons of, it's just a beautiful, beautiful. I love Celtic crosses. Statuary, just gorgeous, just, just gorgeous. Yeah, I love it. It's really pretty. And that has nice patina on it. You know, it's green from yeah. being out in the elements. So there, there's, Absolutely. there's just, my side that likes patina. So <laughs> Right. Exactly. It's just, just beautiful. Just beautiful. No, I thought this was interesting while we were, this kind of reminds me of that other one. This is a sort of a knight's tomb that was at a... Yeah, it is a knight's tomb. It's actually found in the Isabella Gardner Museum. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know if the museum was included, but I did send it because it's a gorgeous... It's a true knight's tomb. Um, the Isabella Gardner is famous for its um, art heist. Um, and that's here in Boston. Uh, you can look it up. There was a couple of Rembrandts that were stolen. Mm. So um, if any of your listeners have nothing better to do with their time, you can Google the Isabella Gardner um, art heist. Mm -hmm. Huge, huge, big deal. The fact that we had paintings stolen out of a Boston museum. And, I, I, and that's where this is. And you can. I looked this up a little before we got on. If we'd done this yesterday, I wouldn't have known this, but I did see something, went to the website for the Isabella Gardner Museum, and it said that she, uh, you know, had, was very, she had uh, made this sort of Spanish style cloister replica in her museum, and that she, oh, had, yes. she had it when she passed away. She actually laid in state in the same position right outside the, like right by this night. I guess she, you know, I don't know where she's buried exactly. Oh, she was very eccentric. State. Very oh, eccentric. okay. Well, it was one of her, apparently one of her eccentricities. Um, when was we she... go to her house, like, cause we'll go to that museum. Um, yeah, yeah. She, when, when we go, realize that she lived there. Wow. And to live with these things, you have to, mm -hmm. I don't wanna say eccentric is probably not the right word. Cause then you think I could the relate. crazy cat lady, which I sure, am. Sure, sure. Oh, yeah. um, but she definitely had a passion and her passion was this Renaissance art, this art, but not just Renaissance, pre-Renaissance because yeah, yeah. some of her icons predate 1500. I think she's got a couple of icons that are like 900, 800, 900. She got a couple of pieces that are predate Greco-Roman era. So, I mean, that's oh, even wow. further than that. Well, so, she was quite a know. collector. It's yeah. nice that it's a museum now and, you know, we all get to share. In what My mother's going to be very mad that I put this on there. Oh, gonna, I was going to ask. Trouble, I meant to so. ask before him, but we had to. I'm probably not allowed to have the last uh -oh. one. Uh-oh. Just so you know. Well, if you don't want me to. I'm going to be in trouble. Can I get you in trouble or not? <laughs> I'm I just going to wonder. I don't want to get you. She's going to yell at me. She's probably going to yell at me. Oh, no. Let's see if she says anything. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's see. Well, here, I'm going to skip it and I'm going to do this other one because I think this one might have been so from that a trip is actually to, yeah uh, so Italy. I'm it really Italian. I'm really into relics mm -hmm. um like beyond relics I'm into you're all relics like, good, like, um <laughs> me too me too like, like 
I, I, I'm absolutely a hundred percent. Like I already said, I'm Italian Catholic. I'm not just like, I'm not just like Catholic. There's a name, like I'm a Catholic and in, in human, like I'm yeah. rosary believing. I mean, I remember when you said something in one of your books and I think that we became friends. I sent you a message. I was like, yeah, That's, you know, a rosary is not a necklace. A rosary is a way of meditating. Um, yeah, like yeah. It was really great. You're like my, I think my Catholic consultant now. Yeah, I'm like, okay, I, I will just ask so you. I am, I am like, I I'm just. Me. I love relics because they link us back to our saint. Now that is not one of you my You will things. love this magazine then. Just a second. I just got to tell you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. let you tell let in a it. second. Okay. Let me, I'm just going to bring this up. So uh, let's see if I can bring it up. All right. This is the, um, I've been subscribing to National Geographic History and um, it's so good. This is such a great magazine, you guys. I love this magazine. But they have, I was thinking of you um, because I was looking at the, when our power went out and our internet went out. I was reading this yesterday and they have this whole page full of all these different historic relics like what they are um you know fingers and skulls and you know everything it was just the niftiest thing i thought oh my gosh yeah yeah so i got that's why i've got to add that in and, and ask you about the relic. okay now go ahead and tell us about this one but you gotta so, you, i mean you gotta get this it's episode. not it's one of my relics he, like that's not one of my patron saints oh, okay. um it's He's not like I. I have my own patron. Sorry about that. Oh no, we always uh, like cats <laughs> wandering in. He's eighteen. Welcome. I don't uh, like when you're 124 human years. You can he do whatever deserves you want. it exactly. Right. Um, if someone wants to know, is that a skull? They're asking. It is I a skull. Believe. Yeah. Okay. So um, it links us back to our saints. The belief about mm -hmm. real relics is that so Catholics number one, we don't we don't worship statues. We don't worship our icons and we don't worship these things. It's just a linkage. It's like a link back to something. It's for us to remember who they are, remember what they are. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all that a relic does. But particularly what's interesting about this one is that remember in the year 1000, everything on there was done by hand. So oh, this yeah, artisan yeah. had to create that box for that skull and everything was done by hand. That's yeah. all 100% that is Italian gold. So it's 18 karat gold with 100% plated silver. Everything was done by hand to hold that reliquary box. And chances are it was probably done for, you know, a local, I want to say a rich person, but probably yeah, a, local, sure. a local aristocrat. Mm -hmm. um, but it was most likely used um, by a local parish. A parish held on to that. So yeah, that the you people go to a church had with, something mm -hmm. to hold on to. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it was just something really important for them to to hold on to. And what's even more interesting is that people have held on to this. I always find that when I look at relics and their age, is that for a thousand years, people have said, this is important. Hold on to this. Here, you hold on to this. This is important. Now hold on to this. And yeah. when we have pictures and icons, um, particularly a, a Russian icon, it's, it's different, another whole other version of, of art. Those things have been seen as important. So people have protected this for a thousand years. Yeah, yeah. That's just a really interesting thing to me. It's a really mm -hmm. interesting way of looking at religious art religious spiritual art history and meaning and how these yeah. things are passed down I, I it is it's also all very intertwined and in cultural things that then can be misconstrued later i mean we don't hang on to skulls now but i mean it, it just in the context of the time i find them fascinating too as so well. i now i'm not gonna get may, in trouble number if I bring 52 may plausible deniability okay <laughs> may or may not be may or may not be the only picture in existence of the spirit cave mummy may or may not be you can do the research around that how's what that? is the spirit cave money oh we will look it up okay ourselves you can go look it up okay she's because i have to give people. it within with, mm -hmm. within plausible deniability of the internet ah, ah okay everybody so we're gonna be a little mysterious there of, um and, it's the I... oldest mummy ever found in north america oh wow Wow. Okay, everybody, there's our homework assignment. Now, you know, we do know that time flies. I can't believe it. It's almost the top of the hour. Um, now, if anyone has questions for Angelica, just go ahead and fire away down there. Don't be shy, folks. Um, <laughs> we have someone here, Sam Self. They went to Mayflower High School in Essex, and we learned about the pilgrims. 
Oh, that's Essex, Essex, oh, I can't talk now. Essex, UK, Essex. by the way. Yes, yeah, so I'm having trouble speaking, apparently. I can't click my mouse and speak at the same time. Uh, so yeah, so if anyone has any questions, fire away. I am going to tell you real quick that uh, next week our guest is going to be Harry Hall. And, uh, you know, next week we're kind of having a theme about uh, International Women's Day because International Women's Day is on March 8th. And I will be telling a little bit of the history there, and I'm bringing a historian on to talk about America's first sports superstars who just so happened to be female walkers, like women who walked. And it is just really an interesting uh, book, very, very unique. So, um, so make sure you tune back in for that. And once again, I've just, gosh, uh, you've made me so, like, I feel like I have so many more questions I'm, <laughs> that I want to ask. Uh, and you've really made, I mean, I wanted to go to Boston before, but you've really wet my appetite. I, I was surprised that you live right by the water. I didn't realize you just could look out your window and you Yeah, it's right there. I, oh, I sit my gosh. in my, where I work during the day, mm -hmm. I sit and look at the water all day. That's wonderful. I love the water. So you've got me, uh, got me a little jealous there. Very envious. All right. Well, I have to say thank you to you. Uh, for being on. I, it seems like the, the um, internet was, I hear your cat meowing now. Is that what I'm hearing? I think I just heard a meow. Yeah. Uh, he, again, he's 18. I, I don't like. Well, yeah. hey. <laughs> well, thank you. You were super gracious. And uh, maybe we could have you on again and just hone in just on Catholicism or something sometime. That would be really fun too. But uh, I just, I love doing show and tell with you and just kind of, you know, I still have not gotten to see uh, Boston in person, but um, oh, you have a question here. What is your favorite graveyard outside of Boston? Holy hood, for sure. Holy hood. Yeah, yeah, it's outside of Boston. Um, it's like, it, it's technically a suburb of Boston. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, holy hood. Holy yeah, I, I want to go there. Oh no, hi kitty kitty. I don't know his name, but hi. Hamlet. <laughs> Hamlet. Hamlet. Hey, yeah. Oh, hey Hamlet. Hi. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, definitely Holyhood. That's that's where the treasures are. Um, I've been, been to Mount Auburn. Um, you know, it's beautiful for what it is, but the treasures to me, my preference. <laughs> my cat's getting. There's your cat. Cat's getting in um, are in Holyhood. <laughs> ah. All right. Yes. Now that our cats are taking over the internet, I suppose it's their time. <laughs> so same self as well. Right. Well, thank you everyone for watching and our cats. Thank you as well. And I just really appreciated this. You've made me even more curious. Now remember our homework. We have to go, uh, everyone, we have to go look up that uh, spirit great cave mummy and um, oh, spirit cave mummy. So Caitlin Doty mm -hmm. has a really good video on the spirit cave. Um, I'm sure everybody here is death positive. Otherwise, yeah. you would not be watching this. And yeah, that's true. <laughs> How it is? Yeah, it's definitely everyone's. I'm sure heard of Caitlin Doty. So yeah, everybody. So we can go watch her video and get the scoop on that. Um, I hope that I wanna... was okay, Twee. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put her stuff in here, but that's like that's she does a no, great job on it. She does. Yeah, no, okay. I'm not against anything like that. I'm all to promote everybody. That's why I have the show is so I can meet other people and bring them on. All right. So, and, you know, share other people's work. <laughs> I just want to remind everybody to please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this today. And uh, we will be seeing you next week. And um, thank you, everybody. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye, everybody.